To make my mammoth haircut, I'm going to use two tissue boxes and I'm going to stick together like this. Um, any kind of boxes will be fine as long as they're sort of the same kind of proportions as these two joined together. If you want to use bigger ones, smaller ones, you want to make a real mammoth sized mammoth, then fantastic. But um, these are the boxes that I had to hand, so these are what I'm going to use. To make his legs, I've used two uh, kitchen roll cardboard tubes. So I've waited very patiently for the kitchen roll to be used up. Uh, a bit like that child of the washing up liquid, I've been waiting desperately so he can use the bottle to make a space rocket. I've been waiting very patiently to use up my tissues and kitchen roll. So I've got two um, tubes I've cut in half. You can see my sort of rough edges here. Um, so I just sort of measured how long they were, draw a line down the middle and then cut, which wasn't easy. So if you've got a sharp pair of scissors, I recommend that. If you're younger, I recommend asking an adult to help you because it is quite a tricky thing to do. Now to make all the other parts of this woolly mammoth masterpiece, as I'm sure it's going to turn out to be, I have used white card and brown card. So I've got a couple of tusks that I've just made on white card, just drew these and cut them out. A couple of eyes, and of course the eyes need to look nice and surprised, which hopefully they will. Of course the mammoth trunk, can't be forgetting that. A little tail for the back, and two flappy ears. To make my tissue boxes look like the underside of a mammoth, I have cut out squares of coloured paper, so just brown for the front part, for the mammoth hairy part, and then white for his uh, underwear, <laughs> and then I've just sort of drawn little red hearts on the white bits. Now as I went for the um, underwear part, I've very carefully written on the back which part it is, because what it was, I just sort of drew round each sort of end of the tissue box on a bit of white card. So I had all the bits of the right size. This one says back, and that's why it goes there. This one says sides, so that should hopefully fit on that side, and so on. So the idea is I'm just gonna glue these on so they're covered. For the legs, I have improvised slightly from the instructions I found on how to make this on the internet, which I'll include a link for in the um, post for this so that um, you can have a look at where I got it from. Um, well, they advised using a hot glue gun to attach the legs to the body which is fantastic if you have a hot glue gun, which, which I don't, and I imagine many people watching this video probably won't either. So I've kind of improvised a bit with how I'm going to attach these to the mammoth's body, which is why I've got these flappy bits, because these are the bits that are going to be attaching um, to the bottom of the mammoth. And then these bits here, just showing the feet covered in fur. To do this, I cut out two pieces of brown paper, which are wide enough to go around the width of the, well, the circumference, if I'm gonna use the correct term, of the um, kitchen roll tube, like so. So I'm gonna glue that one on. Um, and then I've got two that are just exactly the same. And all I've done is I've cut a few little slits along the bottom, just to give the impression of a bit of mammoth fur around his ankles. So for the first one, Gonna make sure I glue right to the top, and right to the edges as well, because you want to make sure they're gonna stick down. But of course, I'm not gonna put glue on these bits because these bits I want to be a bit freer, like this. They're kind of like standing up a bit. So I want these to kind of be at the bottom, so that's why I'm gonna place it on like so. I'm going to stick it like that and bring that around to the other side. I'm just gonna go around and just with my thumbs, make sure it's good and stuck. Oh, it's coming unstuck there, can't be having that. I'm gonna make sure I really press down on that join. And if it doesn't look like it's sticking, which it kind of looks like it's coming away a bit, so I'm gonna put just a bit more glue just on there like so. Okay, and hopefully this time that will stick. A bit better. So that's one layer. And then again with this one, I'm going to stick it on, but this time I'm not going to glue along this bit here at the top. So I'm going to cut that again to make these flaps. So I'm going to glue very carefully in the middle bit. You might have noticed when I glued that one, I put my hands over the flappy bits, and that's because if you're not careful, they can rip um, as I discovered when I made the others. So I'm going to put my hands over there and I'm going to put glue just down this middle bit, like so. So now I should be able to, you see where the glue line is? 
that's going to be the top. Oh no, actually, thinking about it, I'm going to make it look like the others. Ah, so, actually, it's probably about right. Probably like this. There we go, that's going to be the top first. So I'm going to roll it round again, like the other one. There we go, they look pretty even. And again, I'm just going to go around and just make sure it's properly stuck. Oh, a bit of glue. Now, I'm going to then just use a pair of scissors to cut inside like so, to make these little flaps. So I just had a go at trying to glue on the first leg of the glue stick and I actually found that the stick from that glue just wasn't good enough. Um, it's probably to do with the make of glue stick. I think your other glue sticks you probably would be okay with, with this sort of craft. The glue stick has been fine so far for everything else. It's just, I think with this, I just need it to be a bit stronger because obviously I want these legs to hold and not fall off. So. I'm going to re-stick it, and this time I'm going to use PVA. I think if you've got PVA, um, I think it's a stickier option, if we've got a, a tougher hold at the end, but it is going to be a bit messier than if I used to be a stick. But as you know, I'm not afraid of a little bit of a mess. Um, I'm also going to re-stick this bit underneath because that is also peeling off. And again, we want these to be stuck on quite well. It might also be the shinier surface of the tissue box is making it sort of sticker, um, more, more difficult to stick to even. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a go with the PVA instead and hopefully I'll have a better result this time. glued up, moment of truth. Already that is sticking so much better than the glue stick was. So this one on the corner is having a bit of trouble, but that is mainly because it's at a funny angle. So I'm just gonna put a bit more glue on it. There we go, and then I'm just gonna Fold it across like so, and then that's going to have a bit of brown paper stuck on it, so that should make that look a whole lot neater. So now I've got my very gluey legs at the bottom there. I'm going to stick on my ears. So these are going to be coming off the side here and here, like so. So again, I'm going to stick these flaps down and I'll put the brown paper over the top to hide up all these little flaps and gluey bits. There we go, that bit is going to stick just on there like so. So, I think this time I might paint, paint? I might glue, but it is a bit like painting. I'm going to glue the box, or put the glue on the box. It's quite tricky, I find, doing this and talking and making sense, I mean, talking is easy, but talking and making sense whilst doing this seems to be quite a challenge for me. <laughs> Lots to think about when making mammoths out of cardboard boxes, you know. What I've decided to do, because I've found that the edges are sort of flapping away and coming unstuck a bit, and that might be because of the way I was gluing, maybe I wasn't gluing quite as far to the ends of the paper as I should have been. Um, maybe it's the kind of glue that it is, and maybe Pritt stick would have been a bit better. But anyway, this is what's happened. So to make it sort of look a bit flat and a bit neater and also stop it from sort of peeling off later, I am gluing sort of flaps over some of the edges like this. So I'm just going to give it a bit of fold. Actually, this one is a little bit too long, so I'm just going to trim it along like that. Let's see if that fits a bit better now. Yeah, there we go, perfect. So it's got a fold, a bit of bend. I'm going to then cover it in glue and I'm going to glue it, I'm going to glue the paper rather than gluing where I'm sticking it to because this means I can go all along it like this, get it good and covered, make sure it goes right to the edges. It is a bit messier though, you need a proper, a good tablecloth that you don't mind getting mucky, you've always got to be prepared to get your hands pretty mucky too. There we go and the bend's still there. Just finding these bits are just sticking so much better. Of course, it looks a bit tatty and a bit 
wet and crinkly at the moment, but when it dries, it's going to look a lot better. So I'm going to do the same on the other side and around any other edges that are flapping up like this one is. I've now finished gluing on the brown paper. I've covered the tissue box. I think there's probably more glue than there is brown paper, but it will dry see-through, it will dry solid, and he shouldn't then start peeling and falling apart later on. For his back end, which is going to have the underwear, I've decided to go back and have another try with the prick stick, um, or the glue stick, um, just to see whether if I put glue onto the box and then onto the bit of card, whether that actually manages a better stick. Actually, that does feel better. So this is the underside of the mammoth, and this is going to have his legs stuck on. Because these brown bits are going to show through on the heart bits, there's not much I can do about that. I'm going to cover them over on the sides. I have made them a bit shorter. I might actually trim them even more so, so they're a bit less obvious, and I'm going to hope that that still works. Probably going to still stick these on with PVA, because I don't think the glue stick will handle that, but then I'm going to have a go at sticking the rest of the sides on with the glue stick. Wish me luck. I've just put the PVA onto the flaps and I'm now gently pushing them on. And I'm just trying so hard not to make the kind of mess that I normally make. Because um, I'm worried that if I use too much PVA and I have the similar result to how I had with the other half of the mammoth, that the hearts, um, the red hearts, because they're just done with felt tip pen, they'll probably just run and might smudge and stuff. So I'm just trying to do this to preserve the heart. But that's not looking too bad. This bit is a bit flapping up, but that will have a bit of uh, card stuck on it. What's oh, sticking down there now? And then, yeah, I think I might just get away with this. I love this tissue box. It's almost a shame, really, kind of having to cover it over. Sorry, Simba and Nala. A good cause, I promise. I'm going to use the last of my PVA to stick this to the front of the mammoth to join together. And I'm going to use PVA for, for this because I just think this needs to be quite a strong stick. So I don't want the mammoth to fall in half um, once he's finished. So I've got a little bit left in my pot. So I'm just going to try and get the most of that out. I realise I covered this side, but I probably didn't need to. So if you want to just leave this side blank, save a bit of paper, um, absolutely can do. Here's my, not quite dry, but getting there, uh, front part of the mammoth. So I'm just going to stick him down, because the legs are all roughly the same length, I'm just going to make sure that the two, the bottom of both boxes sort of lines up, because that means that his legs should then be lined up as well. So I'm just going to gently push. So it's already a bit stuck, which is what I like about PVA. I'm just going to see whether he stands. Maybe he's a bit wobbly. Yeah, he's actually really stable, so I'm very pleased about that. I'm going to leave him like this, because <laughs> this way up, because the bottom half is much drier than the top half. I'm going to leave him to dry for a bit before I do any more. He's had a bit of time to dry, so you can see that Still a bit shiny, but he has properly stuck and all his legs are really quite secure. So I'm really pleased about that. And uh, yeah, that's how he's looking at the minute. So next step is we're going to try and make him look a bit more like an actual mammoth. So we're going to start off with his face. These are his ears. So we've got his two eyes, which I'm going to stick on. So I'm returning to the glue stick and I think this will be absolutely fine doing his eyes and nose and things. So I'm going to do these really high up and there's a reason for that, which you'll see shortly. There we go. This is two eyes. And then I go to his trunk. Hmm. So it's going to be like this. I think it'd be quite nice to have a bit of a curve to it. So I'm going to gently roll it up and round. So I wanted this to be 
there we go like that so I wanted this to be um, a bit tougher so these are just sort of drawn onto paper and stuck on but with this I've layered it up a few times to make it a bit thicker because I knew that it was going to be sort of curving out so I wanted to uh, make sure it would be able to cope with being bent round and this has done all right so I'm going to stick this like that I think to maybe put the glue on the box this time. Maybe glue on both, just to make sure it's properly stuck. There we go. Oops, still got a bit of glue on my tablecloth in here. Now his tusks, these are going to go on each side like this. So I'll do this one first. The little fluffy bit at the end might just stick up. Okay, little tail on the back of his trousers. I've just realised that the way that the iPad is angled, you wouldn't have been able to have seen his face while I was gluing him, so I think I cut the top bit off. So just so you can see, those are his eyes, which I stuck on right at the top, his trunk just below, and his trunk's curving out a little bit, and his tusks. The next step is to make his woolly coat, which we're going to then rip off when he has his hair cut. And I've made a start in that I've made this part of it, so it's going to sort of sit on top of him like this. But I'm going to make it a bit longer at the side so that they cover up his underwear a bit better. How I've done this is it is just an A4 piece. Of paper but I've added a bit to it so if you take away these flappy bits at the side this was an A4 bit of paper and I realized that that's the width of the boxes along here and I realized that if I had the width down the middle there was enough at either end that I could kind of make flappy bits there so I've just trimmed up all oh, lots of times and then I've kind of cut along them to make them a bit zigzaggy to make them look a bit more like fur and I've also bent them round a bit so I've just sort of gone through and just sort of wiggled them and bent them a little bit just to give them a little bit of a crinkle to make them like their proper hair blowing around in the breeze and then this is his fringe so I've just stuck on a bit of paper you can see the join there off this bit and just made it long enough to cover his eyes and this is the bit that comes down and covers the back of his underwear bring in extra pieces that I'm going to use to make his coat a bit longer. So I've also gone over these with a bit of pen and drawn lots of wiggly lines just to make him look even hairier. I've done the same on these bits. So I've just measured these from another bit of paper um, and the idea is I'm going to stick them like that so there's like an extra layer of sort of woolly thick fur. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue along there stick them on I'm going to do this on both sides and at the back but not on this fringe and then his coat should be nice and long and sort of cover him up really well and here we have the finished article my lovely mammoth looking very dignified and majestic with his long warm woolly coat as every woolly mammoth would have had but of course it's much warmer nowadays than it was in the stone age and so he doesn't really need his warm woolly coat anymore. So I think it's time he had a mammoth haircut. Whoosh. There we go. <laughs> Here is the mammoth underneath. This is what all the mammoths were hiding underneath their woolly coats. You see a rather fetching pair of pants and a rather startled expression. But a much better outfit for today.